Hello everyone, Mr. Terminal here and in this video we are looking into deploying WordPress on a Microsoft Azure. This will be supporting Ubuntu 20.04 and yeah this is the marketplace we are in and the link is provided in the description. Please to look into that. So let's go ahead and create it. Let it let's just call it the obvious one, the WordPress. As such public, yes, general new. Keep here perfect review and create. Once we have reviewed it, we can just once we have reviewed it, we can just create it. Download the private key and create the resource. So this will deploy all the required resources. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, let me just skip to until it is done. Great, our deployment is complete. Once our deployment is complete, we can go to the resource itself. And this is our virtual machine, of course. To set it up, we are going to SSH into it. Or once you have SSH into it by whatever means you did, I just directly did it from my Linux terminal. And what we want to do is configure MySQL. So let's start running these commands. So these commands are available in the description. Please do check that. So you don't need to write it down or something. You can just copy paste them if you want. Let's just set up a password. Really? Just say yes to all of these. That's it and our MongoD MariaDB is configured and what you want to do next is create a MySQL database for WordPress. So first you want to open is MySQL. Let's get into it and we are inside MySQL. So we are going to create a database. And let's call it WordPress DB. Makes sense. Finish the command. That's it. Now our DB is created. We are going to give the WordPress user full permissions on the WordPress database. So the command is to grant all permissions. Privileges, my bad. Privileges on now our db name needs to be exactly the same of course and all data inside this db right to who are we giving it to wordpress underscore user score which is at our local host right and that Uh, I missed a step, so we have to create the user first. I was like, how did I miss that? So, 
create a user WordPress user at local mode identified by a password let's just go for my password now we can grant it all privileges to this user once that's done you have to just save the changes you have made and exit the MariaDB flush privileges exit next what you want to do is configure the Apache server Apache has been installed and it's what will be hosting your website so you need to edit the Apache config file and enter details about the website you would like to post right so the file of Apache web server it is in you can prefer whatever editor you want nano if you prefer it and yeah let's go to the directory this is the directory again it's all of this is provided in the description and you would get into the file within this file you need to update these fields i'm going to show you the server name and server alias right so let me just drop it down here So we don't have a domain name of course so we are going to add our server ip address here so i did copy the command that's going to be handy here you're just going to need the ip and server alias to be whatever you let's just leave that for a while these are your directories you can go through and if you need to configure them further but we are for now we are good to go that's why I just save it once in the terminal again we need to enable site in Apache I'm going to sudo it. Reload it. Done. Now what we need to do is give up as a user ownership of the WordPress directory.
this is our where our WordPress is located. So this is the directory we are going to give access to. Lastly, WordPress installation. This is well, WordPress is installed, but we, what we need to do is configure it according to what we want. So with these configurations, you are now ready to start the WordPress installation using the site's IP address or the using the site domain name, whatever you configured. In order to use the site's domain name, you will need to update your domain server's A record to point to your server's public IP address. Go to your domain registrar and they will have instructions on how to do this. It takes no, normally takes DNS propagation to update on the internet within 24 hours. However, in this example, we will continue installation using the site's public IP address. You can use the site's private address if this site is only to be used internally, but to use the site's IP address to complete the instruction, make sure the wordpress.configuration file that we just saw under server name, server alias has been server's public IP as I just showed you. You can then update it later once your domain DNS has been fully propagated. Right. So what we want to do next is browse to our IP address. <coughs> Once we have browsed to the IP address, you will see your WordPress. And let's go with English. Yep, let's go. Now database name is the one we picked. And username is also the one we created. Let's just run the installation site title could be anything. Let me just copy that. I'll just skip this for you, I mean. So now we can just log in into whatever we did with the configurations. And that's it. Uh, you will see your WordPress completely configured. You can also use Webmin to you manage your server. Webmin is a great GUI to manage your server. It comes pre-installed with our deployment and allows you to manage the server via web portal. All you have to do is go to this IP address, the public IP address of your instance, and at the port 10,000, and just go to it, and you will access your Webmin you may get you will get a login screen you have to use your server's username and password that we created once you log in you can refresh modules so it will just see whatever you have and it's checking for usable admin modules next we can look into setting up ftp users with pro F ftpd so if you need to upload files to your WordPress directory, you can use the servers installed on ProFTP FPTD module. Apache keeps the site website files in the slash var slash w w directory that is like known. And you can manage all that from here. Once you have done refreshing modules, you can go to 
drop down to servers and pro ftpd server here you can go to files and directories now you can configure it set up an ftp directory so what you want to do is not instead of default let's create one slash var slash www wordpress right once that's done you can configure it default is okay default is okay yeah that is fine as well Pay group and directory listings default is again okay real permissions fine Pay is done default is okay and yeah that is it save it now once directory is created we want to create users right so we can go into systems and users and groups and we are going to click on create a new user and here you can give whatever you want let's go for the demo one just sample one you can give deliberate user id that's fine real name is also john home directory is automatic is fine slash bin shell is fine and you want to keep a normal password to allow login and it can be whatever you want right and leave the rest as it is here you can look into it regarding your situation for now for demo purposes this is perfectly fine copy template files from directory yes create a user in other modules yes let's just go ahead and create it and that's it our user is created here it is john this is the one we used to log in and this is the one we created let me go back this is the one we created right lastly what we want to do once we created the user is give the user permission to write to wordpress directory right so we can access it into terminal like we did before i already have and you just write down the linux command for it and your username in case it was in our case it was john and the directory and yeah make sure there are no typos and yeah that's it we have created the user and we have given it permissions hey this is just a side note that came in my head so for those who don't know enough linux to create a user or just don't want to mess up with the terminal so for logging into webmin instead of creating an ssh public key create a username and password and you enter the username whatever you want and the password and this is the same username and password you can use in it to log into webmin if you created an ssh public key you need to create a user password in the linux terminal itself to log into webmin just a side note uh, and yeah that's it about this video if this video helped you please like and subscribe thanks for watching